leaders are a key component to the continued success of our organization and achieving our mission of building a humane society. We're excited for the opportunity to tell you how you can support the Hawes cause as a volunteer. In order to be successful in the volunteer program, volunteers must be able to make a commitment to the same day and time each week for a minimum of six months. Must be 13 years or older, ages 13 to 15 must be partnered with a parent or guardian, and once you're age 16, you can volunteer on your own. Have access to a computer, tablet, or smartphone, and use our online scheduling system and hours tracker. Be able to walk safely in tight spaces where other individuals are working and moving quickly. Be able to stand for their entire shift. Bend, reach, kneel on the floor. And lift and carry up to 20 pounds. Must be able to read, comprehend, and follow detailed policy and protocol requirements and fulfill the responsibilities of their role independently. Exercise good judgment when interacting with animals that are fearful, lack manners training, or lack socialization. Any individual unable to do so must participate with a family member, friend, or aide that is also trained as a Hawes volunteer. This is necessary to ensure a safe and positive experience for the individual as well as other participants in the program. Hi, my name is Cameron and I'm part of the staff here at Hawes. I'm an animal caretaker and I usually do daily things like cleaning the dog cages and cat cages and microchipping, vaccinating the animals that come through intake. But today I'm spending lots of time doing laundry and dishes, which we really rely on the volunteers to come in and do just because the staff already has a long list of stuff that they have to do. We have lots of animals that we're taking care of, so lots of laundry gets put through both laundry rooms. We do have a tight staff here just to keep the operational costs down. So just because of that, we rely on volunteers come in, not just to play with the animals, but also to come in behind the scenes and help the staff with laundry and dishes and litter boxes and even enrichment toys like Kongs for the dogs to enjoy. So it's a little nice treat instead of the food that they get to eat every day. You can help us with these tasks as part of the kennel support team and even though you're very excited about coming to interact with the animals the behind the scenes work is just as important and we all invite you and hope that you come and train to be part of the kennel support team. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm his wife Julie. We're volunteers with the Humane Animal Welfare Society. We're currently active in the cage and pet supply recycling program. Cages and pet supplies get donated to Haas, and we take them home, and the first thing I do is I power wash them. If they make it through the power washer, then we go to step two, and I look and see whether or not they need to be fixed, um, any other cleaning needs to be done on them, and then we bring them back and we put them in the lobby, and we put them up for sale uh, as gently used. People donate for a variety of reasons. It might be that they've lost their pet, or maybe they're cleaning house and they just came across it recently. Then we bring them back here. We put um, tags on them with suggested donations, and people come in and get them for their dogs, their cats. Sometimes they're small animals. We have a variety of things. With the donations that we get for the cages and the supplies, we turn it over to our small animal department where it goes toward providing them with special treats, greens, things like that. Um, maybe it affords them some new blankets in their cages, or it even goes for medical supplies and sometimes surgeries because we don't always get them in without any problems. 
we're always looking for people to help us out with this program. It's really great if you've got a vehicle that maybe you can help transport cages or help fix up the cages. It makes you feel good when people get what they want at a good price and it makes you feel good that the money goes to the small animals and they can get what they need, whether it be medical help or treats. Because you like treats, don't you, Daisy? <laughs>
in situations, the more adoptable they become. Each little handling in its own little way helps these dogs become more social, more adoptable, and on their way to their own home. That's what I see as my role here, just helping them one little bit each day. I'm Rebecca. I'm Sheridan. And we are dog walker volunteers here at Hawes. We are a mother-daughter team and we decided to uh, take up dog walking just to spend a little bit more time together. We um, have a passion for dogs. We love Lynx here. He's one mm -hmm. of our favorites. Very sweet dog. We usually come after I get off of work. She's done with school. We meet up here and take the dogs for walks. We play in the kennels with them. Uh, there's a playground in the back for the dogs to play with balls and ropes and it's a great day when all the dogs get walked. Um, and unfortunately that's not the case all the time. Yay! <laughs> Rain or shine these dogs need to be walked. The um, employees at Hawes do not walk the dogs so it's very important to get more volunteers in here so that these dogs can go out. Um, I really would encourage other families to consider dog walking. Um, we started this when Sheridan was 14 and she's now 16 and actually can walk dogs on her own at 16. It really um, has given us a bond that we didn't have before. It's um, after work we come up here and walk the dogs. It's weekend mornings that we come up here and walk the dogs. Um, talk about dogs to the family members when we get home. We have our favorites. Who did you walk today? Sometimes we're here and it is pouring rain and we're sopping. Winter we are bundled up with our snow boots and our mittens and our hats but the dogs do have to go out. Another benefit for young volunteers like me is that my experience here looks really good on college resumes, so that's also another reason why I like to volunteer. We just really love dogs and it's really important to come up here and give back to the community and these dogs are really special, so that's why we do it. I strongly encourage mothers, daughters, fathers, sons to sign up. It's excellent time spent with your child. Uh, they're in college before you know it, so these will be precious times with Sheridan and the dogs we love. Kirsten. Um, I work in the behavior department here at Hawes. I've actually been here for uh, just over eight years now and I actually started off as a volunteer. Uh, one thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is a unique volunteer opportunity here at Hawes. Uh, so once you become a dog walker, if you wanted to, you could come to our uh, Monday morning manners classes. Uh, we have them, of course, on Monday mornings. Uh, they're really nice because it gets our dogs from the shelter into a training class environment where we can work on some basic cues with them. Um, this is a really great opportunity for you to learn about dog behavior, about dog training. Uh, of course it's really fun as well um, and of course it benefits the dogs because they not only get to spend time with you but they're also receiving that uh, mental enrichment that they can receive through training. Uh, and like I said all you have to do is be a dog walker before you can come to Monday Manners but it's a really fun unique opportunity uh, and I hope you can join us. My name is Christopher Tucson, and I'm a, I am a volunteer dog walker and I do Manners Monday classes. Today I'm going to show you how to do touch over the head with Sarinara, a four month old puppy. So now I'm examining her ears to make her get comfortable with that. And now I'm going over her body to get her comfortable with that. Now I'm just pulling on her tail a little so she doesn't get scared of that. Now I'm going to touch her paws because most dogs don't like that. And I'm conditioning the touch with the treat. Now I'm going to reach over her so she gets comfortable with that. So volunteering here as dog walking and doing Mayor's Monday classes, I've learned a lot about different dogs and I have a lot of fun playing with them and walking them. Good job, Sonara. 
Mary Jane's going to demonstrate weight at the door. And so the steps are with weight, it's more temporary. Um, they can be standing, sitting, even moving around as long as they don't try to pursue out the door. The goal here is to open the door. You want to face the dog while you're telling them to wait. You only want to say the verbal cue one time. And then you can use the hand signal, which is this for wait. And um, your goal is to stand sideways because you do want the dog to make the decision to wait and then give your release word. Okay, go ahead, Mary Jane. Go ahead, wait. And just face them until you're ready to release. Okay, let's go. Good boy. So the Mod Squad is a group of about 25 volunteers that actually work with dogs that aren't quite adoptable. And so when dogs come into the shelter, so if they're a surrender, or a stray, there's an initial evaluation. And so that tells the staff and our volunteers how the dog behaves. If it's reactive to being touched or reactive to some handling issues or is reactive to other dogs or a cat or whatever. And so based on that, there's a plan put in place to work with the dogs to modify their behavior, i.e. the mod squad. So this is our Mod Squad at a glance dog log. What we do is we keep track of who we've worked with in a given day so that other Mod Squad members can look at this and see who's been worked with and who needs to be worked with next. We've had specialized training to read dog body language. We work with dogs every day so we have information about each of the dogs that we have the actual evaluation that we can read through and then we we go in and establish a plan for how we're going to work with a dog. With that plan we then, based on the dog's behavior and how they're actually providing us with information that day, we'll work with a dog. So over time we're essentially modifying their behavior so that they can be adoptable. Hopefully dogs get work with each day by a Mod Squad member so that there's consistent work a positive reinforcement of the process where a dog can be adoptable or can pass the evaluation and can go on the adoption floor. So what I've been doing is, is completing the log that we have for each dog and it's just a brief diary, it's check marks. So this provides information about the energy of the dogs, is it a lap dog, is it reserve shy, and then the skills that they're either working on or I know, sit down, come, wait, drop it, leave it, and then what are the things that the dog likes the best. What behaviors do they exhibit when they are nervous? If you want to get my attention, what do you want me to do? And then things doing fun together and exercise needs. <laughs> We also complete a sheet that actually goes home with the adopted families. They can see what we've been working on, what still needs to be worked on, and we'll provide them with instructions in terms of the protocols that we're doing already so that they can continue those at home and be successful. Hi, my name is Larry. I am a member of the Mod Squad. I've been with Mod Squad for a number of years. I started out as a dog walker. And as a member of the Mod Squad, we have the opportunity to work with dogs who have special needs, if you will, who need some training. They may have some traits, some behaviors that make them less than adoptable for most people. The dogs could be reactive, they could be hard barkers, mouthy, they could pull hard on leash, any number of behaviors or manners that would make them less likely to be adopted. Those are the things we work with. So we can get some dogs that other shelters may be uncomfortable accepting. And that is one of the reasons that the Mod Squad is so important to work with these dogs who need the extra training, the extra behavior. As a member of the Mod Squad, you will receive all the training necessary to be comfortable working with the dogs. And we have a great deal of success. It's wonderful to see some of these dogs who've been struggling grow, see them become more confident, calm down in their behavior. Whatever is needed, that is what we do. We need additional people to join us. And we would, and we would love to have some dog walkers join us after an appropriate amount of time. What is important is your commitment to Hawes, to the program, to the dogs. 
and your time commitment to, to helping, uh, helping Mod Squad and helping the dogs grow and develop and thrive so they can go home. So now that you know what services and programs our behavior department offers, how can you, our prospective volunteers, get involved? Remember that you can become a dog walker. You can take a dog to Monday Manners training classes on Monday mornings as a dog walker, putting the dogs through a training class and teaching them the skills that they're going to need to be successful in an adaptive home. You can become an assistant for our community dog training classes, or you can even ask our volunteer coordinator how you can become a foster home for a dog in need. For the dogs that are struggling in our care, which let's be honest, a shelter environment is hard and stressful for a lot of our dogs, we will ask for foster homes to take on those dogs to give them a break from the shelter. And when the dogs go into foster care, if they're having behavior problems, they can reach out to the behavior department for support. So anyone looking to foster a dog does not have to think that they're doing this by themselves. come in each day as cuddlers, our goal is to get every cat out for exercise, socialization, and stimulation. We are looking forward to the experience, but unfortunately, not every cat is excited to see us come in. So we have to be prepared to take the cats where they're at. Some are simply not ready to come out yet, so at that point we would leave them and move on to another cat that might be more ready for our attention. When we introduce ourselves to the cats, it's important to let them know who we are. So we put our hand in, let them smell us, get to know a little bit about us, and we let them tell us if they're ready to come out. This is Shirley, and Shirley was snoozing, and now she's saying, no, I'd like to come out and meet you. And so we're gonna spend just a little time with her in her cage. Three of the most important tools we have to benefit us as cat cuddlers are time, patience, and the towel. Time and patience can be spent working with cats in the kennel, and if she wasn't ready to come out, we would just simply work with her in the kennel, just so she can get used to touch, used to human scent, and human voice. So you could stand right here and just pet her and consider that cuddling. If she is ready to come out, we're going to use the towel, and that's going to help protect us and the cat. So we're going to put the towel around Shirley, and we're going to just wrap her up like a little burrito, and then we can move her safely. We can move her safely to an interview room, where we can then spend anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes with her, hopefully getting used to who she is, brushing her, finding out what her personality quirks are, and all of those things we can share on her kennel card to help the adopters know more about her. When we're done cuddling, we're going to bring the cats back to their kennel. We're going to safely put them back in, return them to their habitat, hopefully say thank you for sharing their time with us, make certain when you're closing up the kennel, that paws and whiskers are not in the door. And then we're ready to get a clean towel, clean our hands, and move on to the next cat. Hi, I'm Bev. I'm a cat cuddler here at Hawes. I've been here for several years. I consider it my second home. I love the animals. And, but cat cuddling isn't just cuddling cats, it's also cleaning up. If, if their fleece are wet, we change them. If their water got tipped, we change newspapers. We also give them food. And we sweep the floor to keep this area very clean. And we also, when we're finished, mop our rooms so everything is all sanitary.